Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the edge of the glowing seas. This is Somerville Place, the settlement that is closest to the glowing sea. It's not quite the furthest south, that's the Murkwater construction site, but this one is the next southernmost settlement, and it is the closest to the most irradiated place on, uh, in the Commonwealth, the glowing seas. Uh, here's the settlement, and it's a huge plot. Uh, let me show you exactly how large this plot of land is. It's an enormous plot of land, and it comes with this wonderful house that is mostly intact. Um, I'll show you what I did to the house. So, coming inside, look at the ceilings here. Here, I'm going to open up the uh, workshop mode so that no one can talk to me. You see that the really the only flaws in this house, to begin with, were the holes in the ceilings. And I patched them pretty easily. So if you hop on top of the house here, there's this open attic. And you can sneak on in here and plop down some roofs and some uh, flooring, some small floor tiles to fill the smaller spots. And uh, then the, the, the house is good to go. You really don't have to do much more to it. The only major construction I did on it is I did add this workshop. The workbench is, is outside and it's over here. And it wasn't in a nice enclosed space. So I went ahead and built these walls and the roofs. Um, I did have to use the Build Anywhere mod to get them where I wanted them. Uh, especially because the wall tiles are too short. As you can see, they're, the squares are much shorter than this space allowed, so I had to kind of stack them on top of each other. But I wanted this to look like a nice little workshop, so I decorated it with a variety of scrap and doodads, and I put down a couple of scavenging stations that are reskinned to look like shelving units and um, tool chests and so on and so forth. Um, so let's take a look at the inside here. For some reason, pathing is pretty bad at this settlement. Settlers just kind of hover, hover around here. So this settlement came with three settlers, two children and a parent. And when you first get it, they ally themselves with the railroad, but they have these three beds in this room. And I decided to leave it as it was. I didn't want to remove their beds. I didn't want to destroy their bedroom. I figure, you know what? This is their homestead. This is their farm. I'm going to leave it as untouched as possible. All I did to this room is I decorated it. I put a, I put a rug down underneath each bed, a small rug under, under those two children's beds, and then I made these the beds for the kids. One's a little girl, one's a little boy. Over here, I, I don't know if, the, if it's the girl or the boys, but whichever child this is really likes space, and so uh, this kid's got a, an alien toy and a rocket ship, and then Jangles the moon monkey, uh, and then this kid loves cars and trucks and so he's got a little car and a truck with some blocks and a stuffed animal so there's there are the kids areas this is the parents area and uh you know she's got an alarm clock and a hairbrush and you know just some other stuff like that uh i love this painting that came with a mod on nexus and all of the mods i used to decorate are in the description of this video so moving on into the main rest of the house, I decided to split this big living room area into two sections, a kitchen and a lounge area. So here's the kitchen area, and this is a scavenging station, but it's reskinned to look like a sink. And when you assign a settler to it, the settler will come and wash dishes. And so I put a, a dishwashing s section here. Here's a radiator that's also a scavenging station, and then some just kitchen utensils and stuff like that. Over here, we've got the... Um, uh, this is the living room area, the lounge. And I've got a TV over here that plays hollow tapes. And there we go. So now the settlers can come in here and watch TV to their heart's content. And then over here is my smoking and coffee station. Two of the vices that are necessary here in the wasteland. Over here is where the settlers can go drink some coffee. And then over here is the smoking station. I found some lit cigarettes. So uh, it, it, there's the tap house. What's it called? The Irish tap house is a great place to find lit cigarettes if you want to decorate your settlement with lit cigarettes. Also, Valentine's Detective Agency has one 
that I know of. So you can loot a lit cigarette from de the detective agency, and you can decorate your settlement with it. Uh, the, the lit cigar is from the Kellogg quest, and you can find a string of them throughout the quest. Um, so that's where I got the lit cigar. And then here's my uh, terminal, so let me show you my spawn points. Uh, this mo this settlement is really nice in that it has only one spawn point. The problem is that it's right smack dab in the middle of the settlement. Now, I have to come clean. I, I'm confused about this because I have defended this settlement on numerous occasions. And I recall enemies coming from this corner uh, a lot of the time. And so what I did is even though the mod is telling me that there's only one spawn point and it's over there, I still left a guard tower over here and a very small ballistic machine gun uh, turret station. Yeah. I do know that that blasted out tree in the center of the screen there, that rad stag and glowing beasts spawn in that location all the time. And sometimes your settlers will go and pull them. So uh, I put this little station here. And since the mod is telling me that there's only one other spawn location, I decided to build this really large structure right here. Lots of machine gun turrets, mis missile turrets, uh, and a spotlight and some laser turrets. Um, now, I tried to do this strategically. I didn't place any resources that can be broken near this area. So the way I figure it is when I zone in, the enemies will spawn right here and they'll immediately get blasted and they won't have time to go somewhere where my missile turrets could break a resource like this marketplace. This is the marketplace I built. Um, it's just small. I think it's got eight, eight or so different shops. All of them are manned. And this produces caps for me, except this one. This one's not manned. Ah, this one's not manned. All right, hold on. You're not doing anything. Come on. There you go. Okay, so there's my little marketplace on an elevated platform uh, with a nice view of this swamp area, this southern swamp area. And I erected some of these light, these street lights that came with the Wasteland Workshop all around the perimeter of the elevated platform uh, to give it off some light. Then, this campfire came with the settlement, and you can scrap it, but you can't build anything that looks like this, not even with Wasteland Workshop. Uh, I thought it looked really cool. It's unique to the game. You can't find it anywhere else, so I left it. And I circled some uh, chairs around the perimeter, and as you can see, my unassigned settlers tend to use it fairly frequently. Wait a minute. I just assigned you... Oh, there it is. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while, and I don't know why. Uh, right next to it, I put this cooking station with another seating area. And um, the settlers tend to use it. At, late at night, they just fill up the seating area. And then they also come in here and sit down at the couches. Uh, but let's talk about housing. So as you can see, th this house is kind of small, and I've got 36 settlers here. So where does everybody sleep? There's only beds for three settlers here, the three that came with the settlement. Oh, please move. Please move. Please move. Move, move. Thank you. So what I did is... the. I wanted to make use of this space. Look at all this space back here. Not good for farming because it's built on this huge hillside. Uh, but so what I did instead is I placed these three little shacks. They're not elaborately decorated, but they've got all of the sleeping bags as necessary and rugs down there. Um, I really like uh, this one over here. It's at the topmost point. You climb this tall hill uh, to get to the third and final shack uh, where I've got my settlers sleeping. And then all along here, I placed my water pumps. And I don't know, I figured, you know, there's these rocky outcrops here. And I figured, I don't know, water comes from rocks? <laughs> so I placed my water pumps in the rocks there and uh, powered it with this pylon. The power comes from over here. Now, I could have put down a fusion generator, but I only needed 25 power for this settlement, so it seemed like quite a waste. And I had tons of space, so I figured I would use it. So I built this elevated engine room, uh, and I wire it through this broken door. And then I just use these powered pylons and uh, daisy chain it throughout the settlement to get it powered. To get all of the electronics and the lights to work inside the house, I just placed these pylons on the roof. 
in strategic locations where I know I have lights and other electronics in the house and uh, wired them up and it works great. Super cheap way to make sure that you can get everything powered up really well. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I've got some nice fans on the ceiling there and these Cabot House lamps that came with uh, Wasteland Workshop. Really lightens the place up. There's it. I've got a settler washing dishes, another one working on the radiator. The place looks like it's active and filled with life, which is, of course, the point of rebuilding the Commonwealth, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Minutemen, and we are here to restore life and normalcy back to the Commonwealth. No big eating stations here like I typically do. I, 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 had, I suppose I had plenty of room, but I really liked how this uh, marketplace had this nice open walkway here in the middle, and I didn't want to fill it up with a bunch of tables. So not a whole lot of eating space, but maybe I'll add a dining area later. I don't know. I actually kind of like it the way it is, so maybe I'll just leave it at that. So there you go. That is my Somerville place. If you're looking for a very large settlement that comes with a pre-existing building that you can work on, Somerville Place is a great one. It is close to the Glowing Sea, um, but I honestly think the view is kind of nice. You get to see all of these blasted out trees. Now, there are some resources online that are saying that this is a really dangerous settlement because it's so close to the Glowing Seas and you constantly get attacked from the south, but I have found that that's not true. I, I've, I've, I don't think that this settlement's proximity to the Glowing Seas has anything to do with the frequency by which it gets attacked at all. Uh, this is the farm that came with it. There were a bunch of mute fruit plants in here. I removed them all and replaced them with a nice line of carrots. This way you can actually target, select, and talk to your settlers um, and, and watch them work. Uh, little bits of nav mesh issues. The settlers kind of get stuck on this corner over here. I don't know why they, they when they're walking to the farm or walking to the houses, they just kind of walk into this corner and then get stuck. And that's just Bethesda for you. That's just the way they do the thing. So there you go. That's my Somerville place. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.